with our hands, with our life, with our love, we ask justice, we ask freedom, and we take justice. Because the, the justice is not like a gift which they gave. No. Liberty, freedom, they don't give that. We have to take that. And in fact, we go through the streets and we took our liberty, we took our freedom asking for justice. The Roman Catholic hierarchy has never forgiven Father Aristide, the legally elected president of Haiti, whom it regards as a base heretic. For his efforts to chase the moneylenders from the temple, he was banished from his order and forbidden to serve mass. To the very last, the Vatican was the only foreign power to recognize the military junta that misruled Haiti. And the ground for this, too, was prepared by Mother Teresa. In 1980, she visited the island and accepted the Haitian Legion of Honor Award from Baby Doc Duvalier. She found much to praise in his corrupt, dynastic regime, telling astonished reporters that she had, quote, never seen the poor people being so familiar with their head of state as they were with the Duvaliers. It was a beautiful lesson for me, she simpered. I've learned something from it. The Haitian people, indeed, could not wait to get close to the Duvaliers, who in their turn moved forever to the French Riviera. Mother Teresa admires the strength of the powerful almost as highly as she recommends the resignation of the poor. When she visited her motherland of Albania, she appeared to take seriously St. Paul's notorious assertion that the powers that be are ordained of God. The Albanian authorities had proclaimed the world's first officially atheist state. They had persecuted all forms of worship except that of their leader, Enver Hoxha. No whit abashed, Mother Teresa laid a bouquet on Hodger's tomb. Not content with honoring a Stalinist murderer and despot, she also bestowed a wreath on the monument of Greater Albania, a cause that was once smiled upon by Pope Pius IX and his friend, Benito Mussolini. Albania is, for secular reasons, quite rich in orphans. So there was ample scope for an orphanage specialist to praise the institutions of the regime while keeping silent about its victims. If it sometimes seems that the saint of Calcutta is never actually in Calcutta at all, this may be because she operates more as the roving ambassador of a highly politicized papacy. Vatican foreign policy has taken her from the shores of Lebanon, where the Roman Catholic militia perpetrated the mass murder of the Sabra and Shatila camps, to Nicaragua, where the Cardinal was the patron of the Contras, to Armenia, where she helped Mother Church gain a foothold in the Soviet Union. In return, the present Pope is known to have placed her on the fast track for canonization. This is the kind of politics in which she does indeed get involved sometimes when I think of mother I wonder if I've done just right though I'm many miles away I can almost hear her say where's my wandering boy tonight Robert Maxwell's genius for self-promotion made a nice fit with Mother Teresa's talent for fundraising. It became hard to decide which of the two was using which, or was it both?
In the United States, Mother Teresa accepted well over a million dollars from Mr. Charles Keating, a right-wing Catholic fundamentalist and anti-pornography crusader, who was also a California savings and loan tycoon. Mr. Keating's problem was that he was using other people's money. He's now behind bars after the greatest scandal in American financial history. But while he was flying high, Mother Teresa flew right along with him. She got the use of his private plane. He got a personalized Mother Teresa crucifix, which he used to store up treasure on earth. Let's get him out of here. Why should the missionaries of charity have such a special vocation for work among the rich? And does Mother Teresa pick frauds because they need her help more than the honest billionaires? It's not a question that she's ever answered, but then, in the prevailing atmosphere of piety and adoration, it's not a question that she's ever been asked. The Teresa cult is now a missionary multinational, with annual turnover in the tens of millions. If concentrated in Calcutta, that could certainly support a large hospital, and perhaps even make a noticeable difference. But Mother Teresa has chosen instead to spread her franchise very thinly. To her, the convent and the catechism matter more than the clinic. Now we are in 105 countries, and we have 500 convents all around the world, without counting India. <laughs> Beautiful. Modesty, simplicity, humility. By these canonical keywords, we are taught that we may recognize saints. Yet Mother Teresa regards herself as mandated by heaven, which is hardly modest. She lends spiritual solace to dictators and to wealthy exploiters, which is scarcely the essence of simplicity. And she preaches surrender and prostration to the poor, which a truly humble person would barely have the nerve to do. When she speaks about private or public morality, opposing family planning, for example, or defining abortion as quite literally the greatest threat to world peace, she takes on the grim and tedious tones of the zealot and the fanatic. In a godless and cynical age, it may be inevitable that people will seek to praise the self-effacing, the altruistic, and the pure in heart, but only a complete collapse of our critical faculties can explain the illusion that such a person is manifested in the shape of a demagogue, an obscurantist, and a servant of earthly powers. <laughs> 